Whenever people remember the Heaven's Gate cult, they remember a bald man with wild eyes preaching about how Jesus was an alien and that the human body is just a vessel. But who really was Marshall Applewhite? This video will dive into Applewhite's life before he co-founded the Heaven's Gate cult and possibly bring an understanding on why he would become who he became. If you don't know about the Heaven's Gate cult or just want a refresher course, click the link in the description for the basic facts about the Heaven's Gate cult. Marshall Herf Applewhite Jr. was born on May 17, 1931 in Spur, Texas, to a Presbyterian minister named Marshall Sr. and his wife Louise. I'll be referring to Marshall Jr. as Herf throughout the videos so there's no confusion. Herf, with his two sisters and brother, spent most of their childhood moving around because of their father's job as a traveling minister. Marshall's job consisted of traveling around South Texas, establishing churches, and recruiting people for those churches. In 1942, Herf's father would reside over the Westminster Presbyterian Church in Galveston, Texas. Friends of the family stated that Marshall Sr. was a good man and always there for the community, but towards his own children, he was very authoritative and especially hard on Herf. By 1946, the family had settled in Corpus Christi, Texas, where Herf's father founded and presided over Woodlawn Presbyterian Church. Herf was able to attend Corpus Christi High School, where he was involved in several extracurricular clubs, as well as student council and the National Honor Society, and it has been stated that Herf would always compete for presidential posts and clubs. He graduated in 1948. Directly after, Herf enrolled at Austin College, a private Presbyterian college in Sherman, Texas. Here he majored in philosophy while taking minors in English and music. He was also president of the school pep club and was part of a bowling club and the international relations club. In 1952, Herf would graduate from Austin College with a bachelor's degree in philosophy, but in 1954, Herf would be drafted into the Army. Herf would serve in the Army Signal Corps, which is a branch that creates and manages communications and information systems. It would be here that Herf would reach the rank of sergeant and become an instructor. In 1956, he would be honorably discharged and decide to head to the University of Colorado to finish a master's degree in music, while also working as a choir director at the Unitarian Universalist Church in Boulder. It would be during this time that Herf would meet and marry a woman named Ann Pierce. The couple would go on to have two children together. Family friends would later state that Herf was a loving father toward his children. Herf and his family moved to New York where he tried his baritone voice on Broadway, but unfortunately Herf didn't make the cut on stage, causing the family to leave the Big Apple and head to Richmond, Virginia. While in Virginia, following in his father's footsteps, Herf attended a seminary in Richmond, but for unknown reasons, Herf dropped out soon after joining. The family moved again, this time briefly to Gastonia, North Carolina, where Herf was able to pick up work as a music director and assistant to the pastor at the nearby First Presbyterian Church. But by 1959, when Herf began working at the University of Alabama as a music teacher, Former students stated that Herf began to openly talk about the existence of aliens and allegedly writing essays on the mysteries of the cosmos and the infinite nature of the universe. In 
Somewhere between 1961 and 1964, Herff lost his job at the university when it was found that he was having an affair with a male student. Heading back to Texas, the family settled in Houston where Herff was able to get a job at St. Thomas University, a private Catholic college around 1965 where he would again teach music. Herf's music career began to pick up when he was picked for at least 15 musicals to either play or star in at the Houston Grand Opera, including Oklahoma and Annie Get Your Gun. But not everything was going well. Herf's wife left him and took the kids that same year. Family friends state that she had found out about the affair Herf had had in Alabama with a student. They would officially divorce in 1968. In 1970, Herf would be let go by St. Thomas due to him having an affair with another male student. The university covered up the affair by stating Herf had left because of health problems of an emotional nature. Soon after, Herf began to have nervous breakdowns and allegedly confided to his close friends that he was hearing voices. Even Patsy Swayze, mother of actor Patrick Swayze, who had performed with Herf at the Opera House, stated that Herf had begun to act strangely, talking about UFOs and preaching this strange religion. For a brief time in 1971, Herf went to New Mexico where he helped build and run a restaurant called Sunshine Company. But later that year, he received news that his father had died, so Herf would return home to Texas. Less than a year later, Herf would admit himself to a hospital in Houston, but there's a large debate as to why he admitted himself to the hospital. Herf's sister Louise stated that he had told her he went into the hospital because he had partial heart blockage, which allegedly he stated was a near-death experience for him. But the other side of the debate is that he admitted himself to a psychiatric hospital in hopes of curing his homosexuality. Whichever one you choose to believe, Herf would meet a nurse at this hospital that would change his life forever named Bonnie Nettles. Now you know Marshall Applewhite's life before the cult. Let me know what you think may have caused him to become what he became. Thanks for watching.